And I'm sorry about that. They imported me, so I'll do my best. <laughs> if you don't understand something, I can't repeat it. Uh, anyways, it's great to be here. My job really is to look forward and uh, look to the future about what uh, you know what what cars will be demanded in the future and really it's really difficult when you're moving to new technologies like electric vehicles with new infrastructures and so in that case you know there's not a lot of data involved you know you don't have a lot of good data because there's not mass adoption so what I have to look at is people's lifestyles so I pay a lot of attention to people's lifestyles how they live how they use their vehicles you know what they need for transportation um, and so it's always great to have new experiences and get out and this is my first trip to Savannah as well So I'm using this as an opportunity to learn about the environment here. So I'm, I'm happy to introduce the Onyx 6 to you today um, I am standing between you and uh, test driving so I will try to be quick But I do have a lot of information here today and I'm not gonna promise I'm gonna cover it all But I think you guys will have access to it in your kits. So with that just get started So we've had a, a great uh, couple of years, um, and it's really a, a rising tide. You can see that we're now the uh, third largest motor group in the world behind Toyota and Volkswagen. Um, that's really an accomplishment and it's something that we're proud of. And But it doesn't happen um, just uh, by, uh, you know, automatically, just because we produce more cars. Really, it's about producing good cars that people want to have and own and use. And some of those cars, more and more of those cars are electrified cars. So right now, uh, you can see this slide here. Um, in 23, you see the growth rate of electrified vehicles at 17.5% year to date this year. And of those, 4.6% are fully electric vehicles. And that's only with two vehicles in the fleet. So this is without Bionic 6. So we're looking forward to an EV future and we're poised, as you can see with the plant, to do that. So just a little, uh, a little brief, it's not really a bragging slide, but we have been highly recognized and gotten a lot of rewards for our models. And really that's about the, you know, building demand, you know, making great products that people want to own. And we talked about all our investment in, in our facilities in, and personnel in North America. Um, I, I work down here in Orange County. We have a, a cradle organization uh, looking at new technologies in the Bay Area. Of course, the Alabama plant and the new Georgia plant are coming online and Apache engineering facilities here. So really, uh, we have a lot of uh, great investment in, in the U.S. and a lot of um, resources to utilize to make great products. So this is a pure bragging slide. Uh, <laughs> You know, not to get before, uh, in front of ourselves, but we were able to sweep the World Car uh, Global Awards. So we got World Car of the Year. We also got World Electric Vehicle of the Year, which seems a little redundant, but <laughs> and also World Car Design of the Year. So really, really proud of that. And I think this product, if you once you drive and experience it, you'll see what the judges saw. So we're already in production. Uh, it is coming from Korea right now. Um, we don't have a, a, a current plan of whether it's going to be localized or when it's going to be localized, so um, just know that. Um, but we are competing against the, the Model 3, of course, and the Pulsar 2. So this is where we talk about lifestyle. So we believe that we're, our target is millennials uh, living in urban areas um, that are progressive and looking for um, high technology or technology that's integrated into their lifestyle. So these are people, the millennials who grew up, you know, in the 80s and 90s, uh, were born in the 80s and 90s, and grew up with, uh, you know, seamless uh, integration with technology. So they're used to it and they have high expectations for it. Um, you can see um, also no noting that this customer will likely have this might maybe their only car in their fleet. You know, as younger people, they don't tend to be car heavy like you know some people my age and maybe have two or three cars in their fleet. This will be their their everything car. So their expectations is that it'll have good range, it'll have seamless technology, and it'll uh, grow with them. So getting into some of the styling elements of the vehicle, uh, here you can see the front end, uh, simple and wide front bumper. 
uh, active grill shutters down here. They're closed right now for aerodynamics, but also for cooling uh, when, when the batteries are, are running. And then you'll hear a lot about parametric pixels in this. Uh, the parametric pixels are these items here. It's, uh, it's a design element that we really emphasize here. And there's a, quite a bit of them. In fact, there's over 600. If you want to count exactly, I'll give you, uh, you know, a prize <laughs> of uh, un unmentionable value. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about a lot about the streamlined profile. A lot of the design was inspired by, um, you know, the, the streamlined era, the, the age of flight, you know, aerodynamic engineering and design from the 30s. Uh, and that's because it's, it's basically a form follows function. To make it aerodynamic, it needs to be these shapes. So you can see uh, the beautiful shape that it created with the kind of the one, one curve. And you'll see the, the flush door handles, and those are power flush door handles, and those are standard with the vehicle, uh, also contributing to aero. And then you'll notice this contrasting piece down here, um, which actually takes away some of the visual bulk here, particularly in the rear. Looking at the rear of the car, really amazing car, also especially at night with this, this um, the LED tail lights are quite an array. And again, more uh, pixels here. Um, we have the, air, the rear spoilers, actually double spoilers to maximize aer aerodynamic efficiency and standard power trunk with auto open. Just a, a little bit of highlights, talked about some of this, but uh, you know, 18 and 20 inch wheels are available. And this is a top view of that high mount stop lamp, which is quite impressive. We talked about what is the aerodynamic performance of this vehicle. Well, this is the most aerodynamic Hyundai vehicle ever. So, and it is the, the, the most aerodynamic production vehicle right now, I believe is 0 0.20 coefficient of drag. This vehicle with the exterior mirrors and other markets that are camera mirrors is 0.21. We achieve 0.22 even with the, the bigger exterior mirrors. So this is what helps us get the long range and the efficiency out of this battery electric motor. And you can see some of the other technologies that go through. We talked about the active air flaps, but you've got like the wheel gap reducer, the flow separation trap here, and I talked about the spoilers. The underbody of the car, this is probably unheard of as little as five years ago, just to make a complete flat underbody of the car. And you know, it requires extra parts, and then these are, um, engineered to, to make sure the air flows completely smoothly through the car. So, um, really impressive. The size of the vehicle, so it's just about the size of a mid-size sedan. We put the Sonata dimensions up here, the exterior dimensions of the Sonata. Um, here, you can see overall length, 193, we're up 191. It's in the ballpark, but where we really shine is the wheelbase, the 116 versus 111 on the ICE car on the gasoline car. So uh, what that gives you is more space for a, a roomy cabin, right, between those wheels. And I think you'll experience that uh, on the drive. The interior of the car, you can see we have what's called a winglet design. These, again, the, air, the kind of airplane or uh, aero uh, inspired design. Um, but these also active act as um, monitors when you have the rear ex uh, exterior camera mirrors to see what's behind you on the left and right and left and right. We talked about the interactive pixel lights um, and there's a little Easter egg here to talk about um, these four dots here. These were actually didn't come here by accident. The executive chairman actually wanted us to be very different and said we don't, he didn't want a traditional logo on the steering wheel. So the designers, you know, they're very uh, clever. They thought about this problem and they said, well, why don't, let's use these pixels that we're talking about. Let's put them on the steering wheel. And you know what? Four pixels, that's Morse code for H. So it's actually his H logo finally. And, it, and these are light, lit, lit up and they act as like an interactive uh, voice recognition for like a, a, your personal assistant when you're doing commands to the car, it'll light up like your phone does. So it actually has a kind of a, humanizing effect to the car, or a, at least it seems like it's alive.
So in summary, we have a column shift. I think I'm gonna focus on two items here. Column shift with the shift by wire. You can put the shifter anywhere. We put it up here, which is actually kind of an old traditional way to do it, but it's really smart because it opens up that space in the middle. And you'll notice down here, there's a bridge type center console, which actually works as a nice work area, space area. And also underneath, there's even underneath that, there's a storage area, which is like kind of secure out of sight storage or for a purse or for a camera or something like that. And with the ambient mood lighting I'm going to talk about in the, the next slide, but the slim door is something to look at. You'll notice that the uh, door lock controls and the door window controls are in the center of the vehicle. So if you're looking for them, that's where they are. And they did that really to design this, this slim door, which actually gives you a sense of width in the cabin, but also it, it, they designed it to have this over 4,000 combinations of colors. And if you're confused by that, as I am, uh, you can also, there are six program colors that are they're, uh, designed by design, uh, color designers that talk of, that are to enhance focus, uh, calmness, and stuff like that. So those, will, those are selectable through the head unit. Uh, poor sustainable materials, you know, and everything we do, it's not only good business, but it, it makes it makes sense, uh, you know, with the with the project uh, being an electric vehicle, trying to use as much sustainable as possible. We have a lot of different products here. I like to focus on this one, which is like, oops, you can imagine with all the fishing that goes on in the world, fishing nets, uh, you know, probably get thrown away. A lot of them end up in the ocean. Um, so recycling those and making those into carpeting is one of the items that we we do. So the benefit of that long wheelbase we talked about, and I'm going to focus on the rear seat here. And uh, you won't be you'll be driving, so you when you're when you're pulled over, you might want to take a, some time and get in the back seat. It's got amazing leg room. Um, you've got rear leg room, 39 inches versus you know Model Three. It's four inches bigger, five inches bigger than Polestar Two, and in the I'll get to it later, but in the limited model, there's even like, uh, which are the models you'll be driving today, there's actually a plug. So you can work back there, and I've done it uh, on the last media drive. I, I worked, <laughs> you know, I was looking for uh, doing actual work back there, so. This is the eGMP platform. This is the, the dedicated uh, electric vehicle platform that makes this all possible. We have um, a lot of flexibility with this, whether it's size, batteries, motor sizes. So we, this is gonna be the palette for creating uh, our electric vehicles for the foreseeable future. I'm sure we'll improve it, but this is a great, yeah, please. Is this to the Hyundai Motor Group or is this? You know, I'm not sure about that. I've only been told about the products that we make. So the Ionic 5 is on this same platform and our coming uh, Ionic 7 will also be on this platform. And that's, that's all I've been told about. So really flexible. I just talk about battery capacity. This is, these are the core batteries, 77.4 kilowatt hours. Um, we do have a standard range battery, which is 53 kilowatt hours. Um, the achievement of the high AER segment leading of 361 is achieved with the rear wheel drive long range battery. Um, but even the long range all wheel drive battery achieves 316, which is pretty impressive when you look at the competition. These are the kind of the technical sides, so I'll do my best. Uh, but regen, uh, you know, capturing energy uh, when your car is slowing down. We actually have different levels of regen. We have four levels, I think uh, three levels, plus what we call an eye pedal. An eye pedal is basically one foot driving. The car will stop even if you pull it off, pull your foot completely off the gas in eye, in eye pedal mode, uh, you can, the car will stop completely. So that's something interesting to um, just try to settle. It's on the paddles. So if you want more regen, it's the left paddle. If you want less, it's on the more like coasting. It's on the right. Again, uh, the charging. You know, we, we put ultra fast charging in, in the car, and it's uh, this was a big decision because it does cost more to develop a system like this standard. So. Um, but the achievement is amazing. So 18 minutes from 10 to 80 percent, and when you have 361 miles total at 100 percent, that's impressive. And just five minutes, you can add 65 miles. 
And that's with the, you know, we're calling the 800 volt systems uh, with 250 kilowatts or higher charging rates. Um, if you have a home charger, which is probably the other level of charging, you know, you know, most people that will have a home charger, this will be the, the charging they'll have. But even that, it's a quick seven hours for 360 miles. That's 100 percent. So the charging gets much slower as you get over 80 percent. So efficiency. So the, the engineers uh, did a lot on the eGMP to make the, the whole system more efficient. The batteries have more energy density. The inverter uh, is 5% more range than, provides 5% more range than previous. We talked about the ultra fast charging. The all wheel drive system has a, what we call a dog leg clutch or a, a, or a, or a disconnect function where the motor is completely um, disconnected from the front wheels. So this is, so there'll be no load whatsoever on the vehicle. So it allows better efficiency for the all wheel drive systems, which we'll be driving today. And then the integrated uh, charging control system, it basically allows better charging power with the ultra fast charging, but also vehicle to load capability, which I can talk about right now. So vehicle to load, basically having the ability to use that huge battery that you have, big for, uh, uh, for home use at least, um, and pulling that energy out for different uses. So we talked about the back seat having a plug like that would be in your house um, in the back seat. But there's also another way, there's an, every one of these vehicles at the charging port, there's an accessory, a dealer accessory that you can utilize to also have a plug and you could plug anything you want. You could plug a refrigerator in case of a blackout, you could, you could plug in a, um, a campsite. Uh, and if you're worried about um, running out of energy to drive home, you can actually set a discharge limit. Mm. I have a question. Yeah. For the 800 volt? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely the latest. Um, the, I did. I skipped through it, but the the kind of what we say like the legacy systems of ultra fast charging are 400 volt, and we can also utilize those. So we can utilize. You know, we up up. What do you call it? We uh, we're able to utilize all those different platforms. So as more 800 volt chargers come online, you know, they're definitely more on you know coast big cities. Um, but there's a lo lot of investment going on in infrastructure right now, so we expect that because of the benefits to become more and more available. Anyway, so vehicle to load, a, a great feature um, available to each customer. Uh, connectivity, uh, so the cars are connected 100%. Uh, we have Blue Link for EV owners, which will allow you to you know, uh, manage your charging, uh, et cetera. Uh, digital key two, uh, which is works for both Apple and for Android systems, which is great. So you can have a digital key. You don't have to carry your key with you. You can use your phone as a key. In-car Wi-Fi hotspot, over-the-air updates, and EV route planning. I just real quick wanted to ask about um, the battery cells. Um, yeah. <clears throat> are you? Do you? Uh, can you just? Quick refresher, you guys can use lithium ion cells or you can use uh, LFP and EGMP platform? It's uh, right now it's just lithium. Okay, right. yeah, thanks. Um, so we will have the in car Wi Fi hotspots. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you commuting to work, you know, with colleagues, they can use one internet connection. If you have kids, same difference. So, um, you know, it's something that's become available more widely, but we were offering it with a three month free trial. Over the air updates, I like to think of this as making the car better or future proofing a car. So if there's new features or improvements that you can make from a software standpoint, just like on your phones, um, we can upgrade the system over the air, saves you time, uh, and also you can even add new features uh, as we go forward. And now I think this is a very special uh, announcement. We are, with starting with the Ionic 6, we are adding what we call Blue Link Plus. It used to be a three year uh, free of charge of all the connected services announced for, for um, basically it comes with the car, uh, for the life of the car. As long as we can provide the 4G LTE uh, connectivity, we will continue to have it. So that's a great, um, I think that's a great competitive advantage. 
So we will have a full a suite of smart sense safety functions and also this car comes with uh, quite a few advanced parking assist functions as well. So now comes the kind of easy part for me, <laughs> talking about the trim and color lineup. So we have a good, better, best approach. So uh, I think you'll find that the SE, I mean, I think we have a couple of SEs here on hand to, um, to evaluate because that's a 361 mile car. And you'll see that that has standard navigation and we'll go over that in a second. But uh, SEL also adds some equipment and then uh, the limited with the premium features as well. So the SE, as I said, some of the important items to look at here, battery preheating and charging prep. If you put into the navigation system a charging point that you want to go to, it will start warming up the battery and that, that helps reduce the charging time. So it's actually a really nice feature. And then this is a really big one too. We've standardized the heat pump and this makes the heating very efficient. Uh, so in, in cold climates, for instance, you'll still be able to get really good uh, range, et cetera. And so this led to our, also helped lead to our standard uh, long AER. And then you'll also notice things like standard navigation, but the 12.3 inch cluster and navigation right next to each other is quite impressive. The SEL adds uh, 20 inch alloy wheels, so that your cars, your cars today will have 20 inch alloy wheels. It adds this dual color ambient lighting I talked about and uh, HTEX leather at the seats. And then the premium spec uh, power sunroof on the limiteds you'll be driving today some of the parking features, but also the cool surround view monitors. You'll notice when you turn the turn your turn signal on right in the in the in the cluster there. You can see the right side of the car if you put that signal on, or the left side of the car if you put that signal on. Signal on. It's got a great uh, Bose uh, audio system, and we add heated and ventilated seats. And I know ventilated seats here in the south will be much appreciated, especially around this time of year as we get warmer. So next here, colors. We've got seven. And just the note, uh, the gravity gold, which I'm sure there's some out there today, is a matte paint. You'll see it's more like a satin. And I think matte's kind of old fashioned. I call it satin. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit subdued, but it's, uh, it's got a silky look to it. And um, it's called gold, but you'll see it's more like a warm silver. Interiors, the, uh, the SE cloth car has a black interior but the other ones with HTEC have either a black or a gray interior, pretty light gray. And then we do have what we call a green and gray interior for certain exterior colors. The green is only up here in the dash pad and the steering wheel is quite tasteful. So this is second to last slide, kind of gives you some detail on the pricing. So that standard range model starting at 41,600. The SE with the 361 AER, 45.5. And then the all-wheel drive starting at 49. And finally, uh, you know, the limiteds 52 and 56. And these do not include freight, which is at the bottom here. But uh, really, you know, this is the one that the engineers look at here. These are really super high efficient numbers. So you're not getting the range because you have a massive battery. You're getting the range because the car is efficient, which is we're really proud of. And then finally, uh, just to go over the highlights, a single curve streamlined aerodynamic profile creating a low uh, 0.22 coefficient of drag, ultra fast charging, 18 minutes, 10 to 80%, uh, comfort features and customizable lighting for a personalized interior space, standard and, and standard Hyundai SmartSense safety features. And with that, I think we're almost there. Thanks for your attention today.